Hawkeye has debuted on Disney Plus, and we have Marvel Easter eggs and a villain to explain. BD here with your breakdown and reaction to the first two episodes of Marvel's Hawkeye series, my thoughts at the end of the video, Easter eggs at the front, and spoilers all throughout. Let's jump in. The episode starts in 2012 with Kate Bishop seeing the Battle of New York as a rich kid living in a penthouse. She witnesses Hawkeye's coolest moment in the MCU when he jumped off the building and swung himself back in, and director Reese Thomas tells me that we should be able to see Iron Man and others flying around in these VFX shots, but I looked pretty hard and I couldn't find anything, so if you've better look, like, send me a screenshot, please. The opening credits show Kate Bishop in a training montage to become a master archer in an animation style that pays homage to David Aha's work on the popular Hawkeye comic written by Matt Fraction. Cut to today, we're at the Stain Tower, which is probably named after Obadiah Stain, the villain of Iron Man 1, for two reasons. One, everything in the MCU has to tie back to Iron Man, and two, Everything in the MCU has to tie back to Iron Man. We meet Kate's mom, Eleanor Bishop, a character who in comics has a dark fate when she's thought dead and then is alive and okay, and she's just running things for Madame Mask. Hashtag villain. And then there's her fiance, Jack Duquesne. In comics, Jack and Clint train together and Jack becomes the swordsman villain. In the show, the two have not trained together, but I still hope that means we're not gonna not see a swordsman costume. That thing's ridiculous. It'll look awesome in live action. Let's go. Kate finds Pizza Dog in the street. In the Fraction books, we saw the dog being beaten by the tracksuit Dracula's and ultimately rescued by Clint Barton. You're a good dog. Kate runs away in the Ronin suit, which was just recovered from Avengers HQ. What else was recovered? And this one tracksuit guy, Kazi, shows his face. Kazi in the comics goes on to become Clown. Clown wants Clint Barton dead in the comics, but in the series, he wants Ronin dead. The Ronin suit was worn later by Grills, who posted all about it on social media. Kazi kills Grills in the comics, so the days for our little LARPing legend might be numbered in the MCU. Kate and Clint head to her aunt's house, Moira Brandon. Moira is Kate's rich and famous aunt who was an actress who has passed away. You'll see her name again on a movie poster in the living room, so they're sticking to the comics in that regard. The interesting thing about this is that in comics, Moira Brandon's estate in California becomes the HQ for West Coast Avengers. Ha ha ha, new team forming. By the end of the episode, Clint talks to his wife and says he's going to do a catch and release, a nod to the first Avengers movie where Natasha Romanoff was seen captured, but actually in control of the situation. When Clint is captured at the end of episode two by the tracksuit mafia, the sequence is opened and shot similarly in a way that the Black Widow scene was in Avengers to pay homage to Clint's late BFF. The episode ends with the introduction of Maya Lopez, a.k.a. Echo. Echo is a super-skilled fighter and the adopted daughter of Kingpin. I asked executive producer Trin Tran if Kingpin stuff might come into play, and she hit me with the all oh, we don't want to spoil anything. I, I, I respect it. That's a good move. But then we got Vincent D'Onofrio, who played Kingpin masterfully on the Netflix shows, tweeting about how he's excited for the Hawkeye series. Hmm, I see what you're doing there, big fella. So that that's how you operate? You're just constantly looking for things that are suspicious or weird? Reaction time. I quite liked these first two episodes of Hawkeye. I thought they were a lot of fun. The story was a little slower than I wanted it to be, but that's okay. It seems clear that the best meaty parts of the story are being saved for later, but Haley Steinfeld's Kate Bishop is just so fantastic, and this feels more like her show than Clint's, and I'm cool with that. The action scenes felt like they could have been polished up a bit more, but maybe that's intentional to show us that Kate is still pretty new at all this superhero stuff. I loved the opening scene with the civilian perspective of the Battle of New York. That was brilliant. I think the episodes ended on a strange note because even though some of us have comic book knowledge about Echo, the show itself hasn't done much explaining about why she's the big bad here, but I suppose that's some of the fun so we can talk about it and wait for next week. The vibes tell me Jack Duquesne is actually a naive rich guy who thinks he's being nice to people, and Eleanor Bishop is actually the real villain. Overall, I'm giving these first two episodes 7.5 out of 10. Go ahead and rate the episodes out of 10 in the comments section below to let us know you watched this video through to the end. Send me whatever Easter eggs I might have missed on Instagram at Brandon Davis BD and head over to comicbook.com slash Marvel for more updates and might I suggest subscribing to the Phase Zero podcast. Yeah, it's great. I'm BD. I'll see you there.